day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curious. Today's episode is going to be something a little bit different, and that's going to be Masonic laws. Now, most collectors don't collect Masonic regalia, such as the deacons or steward's lodge, but again, with the amount of lodges that have merged, closed, and now buildings being sold, these pieces, as well as the choppers, are coming up on a lot of different sites for sale, and a lot of them are going for cheap money. Um, I have seen a number of options where they've sold a dozen of these rods together in one lot, and they've sold under $100. But today we're going to talk about four different rods. This is the most typical that you're going to find, and most of us Freemasons are used to this type. This has what is called a topper. And this represents the inside sentinel, or in some jurisdictions, he is called the inner guard of the lodge room. Now, this is done, turned beautifully. It's got some nice, beautiful work here. Uh, I do not know what lodge this came from, but the toppers came in three different uh, types. Uh, this one here, is actually soldered to the cap, and the cap is then screwed on to the rod. Others, the topper had a threaded stud, which then screwed into the cap and the rod. And the other one was that the cap had a studded thread that was made with it, and the topper then screwed on. But I'm not really here to talk about this piece here. This, believe it or not, is a Masonic officer's staff. This dates to pre-1890. Now, in some large bylaws, it is stipulated that the stewards each year have to give an inventory of the belongings of the lodge. This was not always carried out. But in Amicable Lodge, it was first done in 1819. And in it, they do mention these rods. Now, today we have in the collection the junior deacon's rod and one of the steward's rods. Uh, we, a number of decades ago, donated to the Scottish Rite Museum in Lexington the senior deacon's rod, which was taller than this. This is the junior deacon's rod. And in this area here was a beautiful hand-carved ivory that was all gilded. And then also one of the steward's rods which was painted white. So we're not exactly sure how old this piece is, but we believe it is from 1810 to about 1819. The second one comes from upstate New York. Now the Museum of Our National Heritage or the Scottish Rite Museum in Lexington has a set of these in their collection. They have both the senior deacon and the junior deacon's rods. This is the junior deacon's rod. Difference in the two is the size of the spheres and also the length of the rod. Supposedly, and I believe this might have been repainted, the original color should have been a silver gilt or a silver color. And you'll find the spheres on the senior and junior deacon's rods, and they represent the sun and the moon. We do not know the age of this piece, but we believe it dates from between 1820 to 1860. <clears throat> the last piece is rather unusual because it really isn't that old as the other two pieces. And it's rather unusual because it's not what you usually find. This dates to about, I believe it's about 1920s and it was given by a Thomas Stewart uh, to the then Beaver Lodge that was formed in Belmont, Massachusetts. Beaver Lodge no longer exists. It merged with another lodge in Lexington, and there's nothing left. We were able to procure the uh, two deacon's rods and two steward's rods. We kept one here in the collection of Cambridge, and the others went to the Scottish Rite Masonic Museum. 
Now, what's unusual about this is a few things. First, it is engraved <clears throat> Beaver Lodge and by the person. But the other thing is, you'll notice there's no topper. And you may think, well, they forgot to put the top on and someone took it off. No. These were made without toppers, both the stewards and the deacons, and we have photographic evidence from various photographs of that particular lodge of a line of officers throughout the year holding these staff, and there is no toppers. Why? We do not know. But what's also unusual is that the individual who made all of them, Brother Thomas Stewart, had the seal of the lodge placed on all four of the staffs. It is a rather unusual rod. Um, again, the history of the rod goes back centuries. Uh, it might not even have a Masonic beginning to, to, to begin with. It may have come from the House of Parliament. Um, but the rod has a fana uh, fantastic history to it, uh, black and white. But not all Masonic rods came in black and white. Some were done in natural colors. Some were turned beautifully. Uh, some were just regular plain staffs uh, with no chrome and no toppers. Um, and also you have to be kind of careful because not all staffs were Masonic. Remember other fraternal organizations use similar pieces such as ours, such as the Odd Fellows. So you might have a cross-referencing of an Odd Fellow piece with the Masonic. With that, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, watch us on Facebook as well. And if you want to leave an email to us, uh, all one word, Masonic Preservation Society at gmail.com. Thank you.